going to be talking about Joachim Mayer's long spear, which is essentially a pike. Um, this is not to be confused with Paulus Hector Mayer, M-A-I-R. This is Joachim Mayer, M-E-Y-E-R. Uh, now, Mayer has five stances, not any variations on any of them, um, but to be honest, it was a little difficult to analyze his treaties because all of his written stuff was written about um, pole arms that had a blade or a hammer, so a halberd or a, a pole axe or something like that. He had lots of stances that involved swinging and slashing, but that's clearly not going to work with a long spear or pike because it doesn't have anything to, to whack with. Um, so it, he, what he did do, however, his, his pictures and his treatises are just a mess of just 20 different pairs of people all fighting with different weapons, and it's, you have to really must through it to kind of understand it. But he clearly has uh, pikemen fighting each other um, and using stances that some of which he does describe, some of which he doesn't. So there's a bit of analysis, uh, and honestly, uh, trying to, there's not much out there on his long spear. Um, but that which is out there is usually contradicting, usually using different names for the guards. Uh, so I'm just going to be using the, the one that I found. I, I request that you guys, if you want, go and do your own research um, if you are curious about advancing in Mayer's techniques. Uh, so on to his five guards. The first one is the upper guard. Very simply put, it's up here. Uh, very nice, very cool. A lot of people like using this one. Now this is gonna be different than one you'll see later on. In fact, I'll just jump to that one now. And this is called the tiller guard. Both of these are above the head. Um, the tiller guard is actually a bit more of a defensive one, whereas the upper guard is usually about reach and you're probably very likely about to lunge, getting the maximum uh, from the upper guard. And then the tiller guard is for defense. The next one we have is going to be the lower guard. And this one is much lower, as you can see. I'll step back so you can actually see all of it. Uh, this, the tip is pointed down at the ground. It's kind of your standard, ready. Uh, again, it's almost like the fool guard in, in German longsword technique. But again, it's not very, though people try, it's not very easy to compare uh, longsword technique with pike technique. Um, the next we have is the middle guard. Instead of your pike being lower, the pike's actually gonna be in the middle, um, at which point this is again a standard one. Uh, you pivot around on your front hand as opposed to moving around like that. This one's always gonna stay ready. And the next one is the, oh, the last one is the near guard. Now this is another one where he describes it in terms of a halberd, but pictures it immensely differently with the pike, and I've seen many different people interpret this as actually a different guard. The reason I'm calling this a near guard is because with the halberd, if you imagine this as a halberd, it's in a ready to attack position. You're ready to swing, it's intimidating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, with the pike position, this is the only one where you're ready to make a full um, uh, attack. So it, I saw the similarities with the intimidation aspect. And that's why I'm using, I'm interpreting this one as the near guard. So those are the five, I'm gonna go through them real quick. We have the high guard, the tiller guard, the middle guard, the lower guard, um, and the, the near guard. You can also hold it like that. Um, and so now I'm gonna go over his techniques. The first one he has is called staff taking. This one's only gonna be useful if you're fighting with a pole weapon against someone else with a pole weapon. Uh, and that would be if you're ever fighting and you find that your spears are actually aligned. So if my opponent's spears were aligned with this one, I'd simply reach out, uh, probably better for people with bigger hands, and grab his spear and just yank it out of him. So that you now have two spears, toss his to the side, stab him, or whatever it is that you do for disarming. Um, he's the only master that I've read uh, that actually included that. So that's a, a fascinating technique. The next one he has is called driving. Um, one of my assistant teachers is honestly immensely good at this, and I hate it. Uh, and that is a, like a flurry of controlled thrusts, not necessarily aiming to hit him, but to freak him out, throw him off guard. So he's trying to block, 
and eventually he'll mess, he'll mess up, leave an opening, at which point you'll drive your spear home. Um, and the last one he has is, oh uh, yeah, this one's not actually mentioned in his writing, but he shows it in an image, and that's called changing through. Same with Paulus Hector Mayer, who actually did write about it. Mayer just depicts it, and that he only depicts half piking. Uh, in which case, what he is depicting is someone attacking his opponent with a, a lunge up here, and the person who's changing through has blocked that attack and is in the process of running towards his opponent while locking up, keeping the enemy's pike away from him. Uh, what you would interpret from that is when he gets within range, he'd give a push or just kind of balance out and stab his enemy in the face or the chest, however he has the half pike positioned. Uh, take a look at the image I'm going to attach. Uh, I hope I can attach it or maybe send a link to it. Um, that is it for the three masters. Uh, hopefully I'll make some more detailed and probably better quality videos later on. Catch you guys later.